Well, in addition to being a small engine repair guy, I also like to repair vintage electronics, especially those that use vacuum tubes. And I happened upon this nice TV Monday morning on my way to school. I was just turning out of my section, and uh, sitting on a main road was this, just in the trash. Monday morning about about uh, quarter of seven. So I picked it up, not knowing that it was, in fact, a uh, vacuum tube type TV. You know, I was just happy enough to find a, a standard transistor TV. This was nice. I took the cover off previously, so you can see what we got in here. Got see a lot of tubes in it. Well, not a lot, but there's about ten different tubes. Now, looking over it before doing anything, just looking over the inside, nothing looked uh, nothing looked too bad. None of the tubes were cracked. None of them looked burnt or anything. I did clean each one up, get the dust off of it so it wouldn't smoke or catch fire or anything. None of the wires looked to be messed up except for these right here, which are for the antenna. But they don't matter, so you can always desider them and solder some fresh wires on. Looking more closely, you know, notice there was no power cord for it. And it turns out it's one of those ones where you have the power cord is separate and you just plug one in. So I had one of them laying around, so that's solved, that problem solved. The other problem was that the three main adjustments, the vertical adjustment, the brightness adjustment, and the contrast adjustment, out of them, the brightness adjustment, the knob for the pot, was broken off, just sheared right off. So, the pot was still intact. Let me flip it up. Just like this one, and this is another one. See, it's got a long extension there. The pot was intact, but I was unable to turn it because, you know, the knob was sheared off. So, I, uh... I took I took the uh, pot off and found that in addition to the knob being sheared off, the inside plate was just cracked into like a million pieces. I don't know how that happened. So I uh, I tried with my meter to get an, an ohm value from it, and it wasn't real good. I and I couldn't really get a, a steady value. I was getting like uh like ten thousand ohms, something like that. Um, there were some numbers on the pot itself, similar to this one right here. I don't know if you can see those numbers, probably not, but they were in a similar location and uh i uh they they the numbers on the old pot were uh about about a eight thousand ohms. 8,500 ohms. Uh, so, what I did is I stopped at Radio Shack and I grabbed a 5K pot and I had a 3.3K resistor which I added onto the, the main coil inside there because uh, the circuit in the TV ran through the pot, ran through the resistance in the pot uh, about, eight, about 8,500. So, uh, I figure, you know, 8,300 is close enough. Um, also, for an 8,500, uh, uh, yeah, 8,500 pot, I added another 3.3K resistor to the, uh, wiper arm inside there to just try to boost resistance. Um, I don't think I have it quite right yet because it seems like the monitor should be brighter than it is although it is pretty bright and you do have a good uh, adjustment with this now and uh, you know I, I'm sure by adding maybe uh, another maybe 1000 or maybe 2k I can uh, get it even brighter you know, 
I just, I, this is not permanent, this is just a test situation here with all these wires hanging out, you know, open solder joints. These, uh, under the wire nuts here are soldered, I just have them capped off so they don't come in contact with this maze of components that, that is, a uh, 50s TV or 60s TV, so. So that's what, uh, I'm working on now, let's see if I... Before I, uh, got the resistance right, I, it took a while to get all the res resistance right. I was fearing that the, um, the CRT might be burned out, and, uh, it, that, I, that was unlikely because, you know, for one thing, you can see it glowing at the base, um, and also I feel the, fear that the high voltage t for the CRT, that too might have been bu bur burnt out, so I, uh, I priced one on the internet from a couple, you know, either new or used. Came to about, you know, three between three and five bucks for a replacement tube there. I wasn't sure that that'd be burnt out either because it, it was also glowing that inside there, but you can never tell by that. So, after playing around a little bit, I did get it to light, get the monitor to light pretty good. Uh, I do have to rig a better antenna. I got a couple stations in with just this, you know, little wire mess here, but I'll have to get a proper antenna for it. It is black and white, if you couldn't guess. And I'll have to try to find the proper, you know, 8500, or 8 to 8500K uh, pot. Uh, one with the proper mounting uh, position. This pot from Radio Shack here has uh, a little nut on it, it's a little threaded part where, you know, it's designed to be, this is the back of some plate or something, and this is what's sticking out the front. The original pot was similar to this one with two tangs coming out the back, uh, which you would kind of fold or bend over through the chassis of the TV. So, that might be difficult to find. Or maybe I can just, you know, put like a kind of, maybe even a zip tie or glue or something to hold it in place, something like, something like that, you know, similar, so, that's what I've been working on for about, for a couple days, I'll have to get my scope out and see what the, what the, uh, receiver part of it's putting out for the CRT, see if, you know, something that, oh, something's messed up in the tuner there, if uh, we're getting a scratchy signal or something. But, uh, that's about it for this. I'll have to show you my scope sometime. It's a 1963 Tektronix 515A all-tube. That was something. So, I also have another one, a RM15 Tektronix, but that's missing about about 16 tubes, and I still haven't found them yet. So, uh, later on when I get this TV all worked out, I'll, I'll, I will uh, have a picture of it actually working, or a video.